Welcome back to uh, 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next now less than 15 minutes as we'll jam-pack this show. We'll talk about uh, the BUHS annual meeting, uh, lots of budget controversy and policy controversy as well. Of course, uh, snowfall in town and a local Vermonter wins the Medal of Merit. We'll also take you live to the State House uh, via Skype where the uh, Death with Dignity End of Life Choice legislation has just been passed uh, hours ago. All that and more. We do it in uh, 15 minutes. As I mentioned, we're going to do it in less than that. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this February 12th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden uh, taking a look there at a uh, trailer made by the students at Brattleboro Union High School for what their morning news advisory program, BUHS TV, might just look like in 50 years. Why are we playing a little clip of that? Aside from it uh, being some fun programming, they've now returned with a new set of students in a new semester. Uh, we'll get their weather report as we clip in, and then uh, in just a few minutes at 6 p.m., uh, you can check out the uh, weather report in addition to uh, all the morning uh, news announcements as we replay their morning broadcast, 6 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8 Daily. All right, we're going to jump into the stories here. A Vermont woman who scaled a concrete barrier, climbed a fence, and ran across lanes of traffic to render medical assistance to injured passengers of the head-on collision she witnessed. Now, she's been awarded the Vermont Medal of Merit. National Guard Major Amy Dennis was awarded uh, this medal for her efforts last May 7th and was decorated by fellow Guard members at an intimate ceremony held uh, in Vermont this month. We've got a clip of that. We'll start uh, by taking a look at the video. Major Dennis's willingness to risk her are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military. She re literally was the first one on scene ran through all the traffic, the scene wasn't secure, the car was on fire, her medical training kicked in and she went into full mode. I think the military instills in you with all of our repetitious drills that we all complain about, the ability to, as soon as the crisis occurs, to, to act immediately and to not hesitate, and I certainly got that through the military. All right, uh, well, we'll take a, uh, a glance now at some of the weather going on, and for this we're gonna head right to uh, YouTube and check out content from our uh, content specialist, content producer Ian Keel, who was out together Friday's storm, though uh, weather will continue. This past Friday saw a blizzard worth noting, uh, putting to rest fears of a mild winter, but there looks to be more snow on the way before all's said and done. Uh, the weather uptick uh, in this white weather here has prompted several National Weather Service and Vermont State Police safety bulletins urging Vermonters to Stay safe by limiting driving where possible, uh, not uh, attempting to fix damaged power, phone, or cable lines themselves. And uh, on top of that, to uh, make sure they don't throw their backs out. Uh, make sure that you avoid back, neck, and leg injury by shoveling in moderation. There's some footage shot by 545 Live content specialist Ian Keel after the storm uh, that hit Friday, some Saturday footage. And all right, it's been equated to euthanasia, suicide, and even murder, but for proponents of the law dubbed Death with Dignity, which would allow a select group of terminally ill patients access to life-ending prescriptions, the legislation's absence is what's proved uh, inhuman. And while some argue that advances in palliative care uh, can now control situations of extreme suffering, others believe that for those with uh, advanced stages of de degenerative disease, death is the only real protection modern medicine can offer. The end-of-life choice debate has been met with uproar on both sides of the aisle in states across the country, but with places like Oregon more than 14 years in. An increasing number of local ballots have seen some form of the legislation, and today it's in the Vermont State Senate that the next chapter in the issue's history is being written. We're going to speak with State Representative uh, Mike Merwicki live from the State House in just a moment, but first I want to take a, a look at a piece assembled by our content specialist Greg McAllister about the uh, whirlwind of 
uh, morals, ethics, m medical science, religion, and mystery that's been folded in uh, to this project. This is footage compiled from the last year. In and out of the State House, uh, a gathering of politicians, end of life activists, elder care professionals, religious scholars, you name it. Uh, Greg has managed to gather all of them uh, into this clip he's been diligently working on. If you rename this, if you didn't call it uh, physician assisted suicide, but if you emphasize death with dignity, mm -hmm. then we would reconsider. What this uh, provides is for a, a terminally ill person uh, with six months to live to have the physician prepare a lethal medication. In Christian theology, this assumption is based on Genesis chapter 1, which tells how God gave to the first man and the first woman the freedom to make their own decision. My main concern is that people have control over that very last moment of their life as opposed to and so I'm going to reflect that because I don't like the way it sounds here hastening. One of the things we've heard, especially out of Oregon, is that the end-of-life choices are not made because of pain, but they're made because of quality of life, of dignity, of I don't have full control of myself anymore. I think it really is an ethical conflict for a doctor or a nurse to aid a patient to die rather than to make them comfortable and help them to live. One in ten of those who pass all of the criteria and, and have the medication in hand uh, that use it. I think it's a personal right. I think it's a hugely private right. This is the kind of issue that does, it's very personal. But I don't think that that should um, stop us from giving those persons the ability to make those choices for themselves. Well, uh, as mentioned just hours ago, the Senate uh, did pass uh, the initial, the preliminary approval for this bill, uh, 17 to 13, and uh, they actually overrode the Judiciary Committee's recommendation. Now, uh, later in the week, they say maybe Thursday this will... Uh, the, the decision will be made. Uh, we're joined by uh, State Representative Wyndham District 4 Representative Mike Merwicki, a strong proponent of this bill, uh, as uh, we, we move ahead and they, they have done the preliminary approval. Mike, uh, tell us, how's the, the feeling up there? As uh, this, uh, I know this, this bill means a lot a to you. It's a happening place. Uh, the State House has been really jumping since last week. Uh, the Senate did pass that out. And uh, I just like saying on record, this is something that I support. Uh, I am a longtime supporter of civil rights. I believe this is a, a civil rights issue. This is the right thing to do, and um, I'm hoping that uh, we can move forward on this. Mike, thanks for checking in with us live from the State House. We'll get a, a full webcast from Mike Merwicki from up there uh, via web stream uh, to put up for you, but uh, I don't know. Uh, even uh, amidst uh, a busy day up there. Appreciate Mike checking in with us here. All right, uh, a few more things to wrap up. BUHS annual meeting is live tonight uh, in just a little over an hour at the high school. Uh, and there's plenty to talk about when it comes to the BUHS budget. All right, controversy first brewed after a Brattleboro Finance Committee recommendation that the town rejected. Well, uh, let's, let's reel this back. Controversy first brewed after a Brattleboro Finance Committee recommendation that the town reject the BUHS school district's admittedly modest budget proposal in favor of a level funded uh, budget. That was uh, documented as a slamming in the reformer headline last week, something that led uh, to an editorial from Finance Committee member Michael Bosworth rebuking the headline, uh, stating uh, only, or, uh, perhaps uh, let's, beyond only, let's take a look. He wrote, I personally cringed at reading uh, Finance Committee Slams HS Budget when we simply recommended a level funded budget. The committee's original statement can be quoted as saying, when combined with big ticket items, the wastewater treatment plant, the police fire station upgrades, uh, the confluence of taxes and fee increases will make Brattleboro an unaffordable town to live and do business in. Now, at the school board's uh, last regularly scheduled meeting, Chair Bob Woodworth explained the 2.37% hike as a product of increased operation and maintenance expenses. The, the primary differences in terms of increase in this budget are uh, that we, we have allowed um, 
for increased operations and maintenance expense. We are not asking for any capital items in next year's budget. Other uh, increases include the hiring of a student facility interventionist at the senior high school textbooks and support for the Asian, Asian studies program. Now there uh, is more up for debate uh, as well uh, when it comes to this annual meeting, which uh, any uh, taxpayer, interested taxpayer is more than welcome to show up for, also up for debate. Uh, a series of policies regarding the school's crisis prevention protocol, including readoption of policies that uh, allow for police interrogation of students without parental consent. Uh, now, basically, to break this down, the policy relates only to questioning students without their parents' knowledge when the investigation itself is, uh, relates directly to unlawful behavior on the part of the parent or guardian. Uh, the debate has to do really whether, uh, with whether or not school administrators have the right to decline police interrogation of students without parental consent if they see fit, uh, a right that was exercised from the policy in 2009, though as the school's legal counsel from the Vermont School Boards Association pointed out in a letter read at the last school board meeting by member Ian Torrey, the policy is always subject to change uh, in both federal and state laws. The rationale for no longer posting this policy is that it basically attempted to summarize the state of the law on this end subject. And the law itself is in constant flux as courts review specific fact situations and render opinions as to their legality. We're gonna move on and do some shameless self-promotion, uh, self going back into the split screen here and talk a little bit about uh, some things that are new on BCTV. It's, uh, of course, we gear up for Harris Hill, so we are running last year's 2012 Pulse Special Edition of Harris What'd Hill. What'd you think of this year's event? Oh, no, no snow. I mean, we did all right, though. Yeah, the Hill crew and all the volunteers did awesome, so I'm really happy with it. That's uh, just 24 hours from now tomorrow night right here on Channel 8. And then we've got the latest edition of the mental health talk show, Let's Talk About Mental Health. Depression is often this sort of fear of where you are that today is going to be like yesterday, that it's never ending. And there's, there is no sense of relief. I mean, most of us can suffer mm -hmm. with pain and stuff as long as we know it's going to end. Yeah. That's 30-year counselor Robert Stack, one of uh, the hosts of Let's Talk About Mental Health, a live call-in show. Uh, you can catch that rebroadcast tomorrow night, 11.30 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. All right, uh, just a few more things to wrap up here. Let's get the weather report from UHS TV. Take a look at what's going to happen tomorrow before we send you on your way on this extended edition of 545 Live. Tomorrow's weather shall be high of 26 and a low of 23, breezy and sunny. Temperature's a little bit better, but still yucky. Uh, just a brief uh, sample of BUHS TV, their morning news advisory program. You can catch that uh, live at 10.15 a.m. Two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. And we also rebroadcast it week, uh, weekday nights, weeknights at 6 p.m., so directly following this here show right on Channel 8. Uh, we're going to bump right up against it back to back. As I can see uh, behind me out of the corner of my eye, time ticking down here on this 545 Live. Thanks to State Rep Mike Merwicki for checking in with us live from the State House. Content specialist Ian Keel, who is out gathering all that great snow footage, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including uh, our public relations manager, Vlasta Papelka, who was helping me wheel around this beast of a desk to get uh, set up uh, down here on Main Street just before the show, go running up uh, up and down Main Street trying to get this ready in this cold weather. All right. Well, remember, we'll be back Friday, 5.45 p.m. Uh, again, right here on Channel 8. Check in with us then for all the latest updates. In the meantime, I'm Roland Boyden saying good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, because what, what happened was, I ca at the end I thought we were done because the, 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 the credits came on. And I was talking about my last answer, I said, boy, that felt rambling, didn't it? <laughs> and that actually plays underneath. <laughs>